In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use a movie clip and motion guide feature by animating a buzzing bee. Firstly, I'm going to double click on the 12 FPS to change the frame rate to 20 frames per second. This will give us a smoother animation and make calculating seconds and half seconds much easier. Okay, firstly, I'm going to take the oval tool. I'm going to make sure that I have no stroke. And then I'm going to draw kind of a fat oval as the body of my bee. Now to make it look a little bit more like a bee, I'm going to use a linear gradient fill. And I'm going to come over to the color options at the right hand side. And by double clicking on these tabs that I've added, I can choose the appropriate color that I would like. So I'll carry on with this until I get the colors I want and with the fill bucket I will fill the oval to look more like a bee. Okay, I'll return the color fill to simple black to draw the head of the bee. Just a simple circle should do. Now with the paintbrush I'll make sure I have an appropriate thickness to draw a couple of little antennas on the bee's head. And so you can see this is a bit of an overhead view of the bee. Finally, with the line tool, I'll connect this to the bottom of the bee's body. I'll make it black just to make sure it stands out fine. And I'll draw one line out, and I'll connect that with the body downward. And by filling it with the bucket, which is still set to black, I now have a little stinger on the end of the bee. So I've drawn everything I need from the bee minus the wings, and I've done this intentionally. You can see we've got one part of the head, one part of the body, one part of the stinger. Now I'm going to draw with my selection arrow a box all the way around these so they're all selected. I'm going to right click on them, and I'm going to choose Convert to Symbol down near the bottom. And when we do this, I want to choose the movie clip feature and I'll just go ahead and name this B very simply <coughs> and I'm gonna put the registration point to the center not necessary but tends to make things easier and now you can see at the bottom right in my library I have the B movie clip so I'm currently in scene one as you see but if I double click on the B it takes me inside of the B animation I can go back to scene one, the main scene, by clicking the back button. But for now, I'm going to double click again, and we're going to work within the B animation. So anything we do in here uh, will affect only the B and nothing else. Okay, I'm going to name this first layer body, and then lock it, because I'm happy with how that looks, and I don't want to accidentally make any changes. I'll insert a new layer, and we'll devote this one to wings. All right, so you can see I now have a, an empty keyframe in frame one. With a paintbrush, I'll choose a gray color to draw the wings, and you can choose whatever color you like. And I'll draw it there, and I'm going to make sure to connect both ends so you have a complete outline of a wing so that when I try to fill like this, it does actually fill. So make sure that those are connected as a whole object, a whole outline. The selection arrow, I'm going to click on it, and over to the right, where the color options are, I'm going to drag this alpha option down to somewhere around 30, 40, maybe 50%. And you'll see that, when I let go, you can now see through the wing. It's important to do this uh, before copying, as I'm doing, to make another wing. So I've copied that one. I'm going to paste in place. So there'll be one wing lying on top of the second wing and I'll drag that down. Up in the Modify menu at the top, I'm going to go Transform and I'm going to flip the wing. So now you can see it's like a mirror image of the other wing and if you move it around you'll start to see lines which help you to line up your wing with the other wing. Okay. 
Finally, I'm going to add a keyframe in frame 5 so that I can continue the flapping of these wings. But, oh, look what happened. The bee has disappeared. And that's only because we didn't tell Flash that the body should continue in the animation as well. So under frame 5 on the body layer, make sure you insert a regular frame just to tell the Flash animation that it's continuing that far. Now, I'm going to put a keyframe on frame 3, and then I'm going to put a motion tween on both frames 2 and 4 on the wings layer. So This is going to help me with the animation of the wings to give the illusion that they're flapping. It's a good idea to put the motion tweens in before you put in the keyframes and before you change anything with the wings. With the free transform tool in the third frame, I'll just shrink the wings a little bit, go back to scene one, and by testing the movie control enter, you can see the wings are flapping. All right, so first part's done. Now we need our bee to move. So at the start of this animation, you can see in scene one, we only have one frame of animation so far. So for that frame, I'm going to move the bee over to the right side of the screen off stage and drag him into place. I've also shrank him a little bit because you'll see as we go along, uh, you can change the size of your objects in your animations. Okay, I'm going to go six seconds ahead, which at 20 frames per second is 120 frames, and I've put in a keyframe. And now I'm filling in between those two keyframes and 120 and frame one with a motion tween. Now in selecting carefully in frame 120, I'll drag the B to the left side of the screen, also off stage, but I'm going to increase his size. Now watch when we play the small B, as it flies across for six seconds, has grown into a big B. You can see the full motion tween from frame 1 to frame 120. I'm going to name this layer B. And then I'm going to right click on the whole layer and I'm going to add a motion guide. And what you're going to see is that a new layer has been added above the B layer. Uh, and the B is actually kind of a sub layer of that motion guide. So if I click in the first frame and I take my pencil and go over near where the B starts, I'm going to draw one long continuous line. Do not lift the pencil or let go of the button as you draw. Okay, so this is the path that I want the B to follow. And if I take my selection arrow, I make sure the B is sitting on the line in the first frame. And then scroll to the last frame. And as you can see, in the motion tween, you've got a bluish gray color behind the arrow, whereas in this last frame, it's just gray. That means that it's not part of the tween. So I need to click on that frame, come down to the bottom properties, and change that to make it part of the motion tween. This will bring up the properties for the motion tween. And from there, I'll select Orient to Path, Sync, and Snap. And if you're watching, you would have seen the bee actually jump onto the line, which is a very good sign. So if we preview that and test that movie, you can see the bee is now following the line. But it's not following it head first. So even though we've oriented to path in the 120th frame, we haven't done it in the first frame. So we're going to go back to the first frame and do that and watch our movie again. And now you can see the bee is following the path head first from the top right to the bottom left.